Good evening from New York. This is Friday, October 15th, 18 days until the 2010 midterm elections. And Republicans are spending much of their time right now laughing at the Democratic strategy of pointing out how much secret millionaire cash is funding Republican ads. Laughing because the strategy has failed to gain any attention from voters or the media. At least that's what they keep telling the reporters who keep asking them about it. Our fifth story tonight, the secret money funding the Republican campaign to control Congress and what Republican gloating about the issue reveals about it. The chairman of the Democratic National Committee joins us presently, but we begin with the alleged Republican glee over Democrats harping on the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and other secretive right-wing groups funneling tens of millions of dollars, some of it from foreign corporations, into Republican campaign ads. The president not backing off today, ramping up what is now more than a week's worth of steady criticism of the chamber specifically and of similar groups like Carl Rose serving as cloaks for the millionaires bankrolling them, laying out again why this matters and calling out again the secret millionaire donors who funnel not just personal money, but sometimes even the assets of companies they run into partisan attack ads without having the courage to say they are doing so. Right now, the same special interests that would profit from the other side's agenda, they are fighting hard. They're fighting back. To win this election, they are plowing tens of millions of dollars into front groups that are running misleading negative ads all across America. Tens of billions of dollars are pouring in. And they don't have the courage to stand up and disclose their identities. They could be insurance companies or Wall Street banks or even foreign-owned corporations. We will not know because there's no disclosure. They've got these innocuous-sounding names, Americans for Prosperity and Moms for motherhood. <laughs> I made that last one up, but, but this isn't just a threat to the Democrats. It's a threat to our democracy. <laughs> and the only way to fight it, the only way to match their millions of dollars is with millions of voices. At yesterday's Kentucky Senate debate, Democratic candidate Jack Conway seized on the distinction between local chambers of commerce, which actually support local economic growth and kept up the drumbeat against the U.S. chamber. Republican opponent Rand Paul then articulated the Republican claim that they love this when Democrats do this. We would encourage you to keep attacking the chamber because the chamber is probably more popular than any politician running for office. So please, your side, if you like this, keep on attacking the chamber. Makes no sense whatsoever. And I think it's a really, really poor political tactic and untrue. How much do Republicans love the Democratic focus on their secret paymasters? News Corp chairman Rupert Murdoch spent much of his annual shareholders meeting today fielding questions about his million dollar donation to the Republican Party and what he thought was going to be a secret News Corp donation to the chamber. There's breaking news on that. At this hour, it turns out it wasn't just a million dollars to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce from Fox's parent company News Corp and Rupert Murdoch. There was another donation of $250,000 more. News Corp is now in the books with the Chamber of Commerce for $1.25 million. You will hear Murdoch on tape defending these actions to his shareholders later in this hour. But despite the Republican claim this story does not matter, Carl Rove's group today sent reporters an email blast playing defense, trying to focus attention on Democrats who previously also worked for groups that did not disclose their donors. And what to make of claims by Rove's groups and others that they are benefiting from this scrutiny because it's prompting new donations? Politico today reporting that Rove's groups claim to have gotten more than $100,000 in small dollar online donations since the president began to criticize them and that they will use that money to pump $2 million into eight more House races today. So how does $100,000 get them to $2 million? A separate story in Politico reports $13 million raised in the same time period. But the 100000 was, quote, small dollar donations, which would make the remaining $12,900,000 medium to large donations. Let's turn to Matthew Iglesias, a fellow with the Center for American Progress, who blogs at thinkprogress.org, which first broke the chamber story. Matt, good evening. Good to be here. Republicans say they love this story, um, which asks, uh, sort of leads me to ask you, why then are they so ticked at you guys for breaking it? I would think they'd be sending over champagne. 
Well, you know, it's a good story. I mean, uh, if, if they were really eager to have people know who was donating to them, I think they could put that information out there in the public domain. And, you know, really what this has always been about is about disclosure and about transparency, not about who does it help in the fall. Uh, since this new Supreme Court ruling came down, there, were, there was an effort in Congress, a Disclose Act, that would have forced people who were putting these TV ads up to say who was giving them money. Republicans didn't like that idea. Big business didn't like that idea. Because what they want is the ability to intervene in the political system without anyone being able to hold them accountable. That means voters can't hold the politicians accountable, and it means customers can't hold companies accountable for what they do. And so, you know, that's why there's all this pushback. That's why they were against the Disclose Act, and that's why it bothers them when we talk about this. Let me correct something that I read uh, incorrectly, and it's my, my bad for doing so. The extra $250,000 that Murdoch and Fox uh, News, uh, through the persona of News Corp, gave was not to the Chamber of Commerce, but rather to the Republican Governors Association. It's a distinction somewhat without a difference, but I wanted to make sure that uh, I corrected this end of it. But uh, let me ask you about this other report on Think Progress. Sure. The number of foreign members of this U.S. Chamber of Commerce are in the outsourcing business. And what's the implication of that? Well, you know, we were looking specifically just to gather as much information as we can about who are the Chamber's foreign donors. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the branches we were able to look at was, was their branch in India, and it turns out that a number of the firms there uh, advertise themselves as being in the outsourcing business. We're putting this out there because, you know, we want people to understand what kind of reasons might companies have for wanting to intervene in American politics. You know, after all, these are Indian companies, uh, so, you know, what do they care about us? A and there are a lot of questions that we still don't know. There's a setup similar to the Indian one that the chamber has for South Korea and also for Egypt and for Brazil. Mm -hmm. But the, the websites of those subsidiaries don't have the information about what the companies in those countries, uh, you know, that are donating into the chamber's general fund are. So we're trying to find out as much as, as we can. And I think we would appreciate it if, if other people in the political system and the media who were interested in this, instead of just swallowing the chamber's spin, mm -hmm. would join us in trying to look into it. To their credit, Politico examined uh, federal records of third-party groups that, that do have to disclose, which is at least tangentially involved in this story. Mm -hmm. And they found, and let me quote it, the profile of the 2010 corporate donor that can be gleaned from these public donations suggests that the vast majority of them represent longtime Democratic adversaries and former Bush loyalists. Why is it uh, all on one side? Why is it seemingly so totally unbalanced? Well, you know, I think it's no surprise. I, I remember when Tom DeLay was running the House of Representatives and they had lobbyists in the committee rooms writing the bills. When George W. Bush was president, you had lobbyists and industry trade groups having their members put in to be heads of regulatory agencies. You know, big business has influence over both parties, has a lot of influence in America, but they know, you know, whose side is best for them and they're putting the money in to, to make them that happen, make them come to power. And you see that in the differential between the money they're spending. Matthew Iglesias from the Center for American Progress and blocking at Think Progress. Great work, and again, great thanks. Thank you.